So in this video, I'll show you how to fix a Dell Inspiron E5450 laptop that won't turn on. I will guide you through the process of troubleshooting the problem to the point of actually fixing the problem in this video. So. So this is a Dell Inspiron E5450 laptop that won't turn on and I'm going to show you how to fix the, the issue. There are several reasons why your um, laptop will not turn on but I will show you how to be able to solve the problem with this video. Now I'm going to just try to put it on so that you see what I mean. This is the power adapter. I'm going to plug it to the laptop. And when I plug it to the laptop, you notice that the laptop is cold. The indicators are not coming on. And if you press the power button, it is not turning on at all. You can see from these, there is no, there are no indicators that are showing that the power is plugged in. And when I try to press the power button also, we we'll see what I mean. You can see that nothing is showing here. So what we are going to do is to solve, troubleshoot where the problem is and then we'll solve the problem. But the first thing I'm going to do is to remove the adapter and then I'll remove my hard drive. You can see the hard drive. I've removed it already. And then the RAM. This is the hard drive that I removed initially. So after removing the RAM, the hard drive, any bat battery, basically all the detachable components on this laptop, I'm going to remove all the screws, especially the ones that are visible that you can see. We'll remove all the screws and then we'll remove this top panel. And the reason for that is so that we can be able to get access to to the motherboard inside.
so now that we've opened the the top casing you will notice that uh, there is this button here i don't know if you can see that is where the power button is and close to the power button you'll notice that there is a cmos battery this is a cmos battery so what i'm trying to do now is to remove the cmos battery and then i'll drain out the the static charge on the logic board now when there is static charge on the log logic board when you plug in your adapter or you try to power it on the static charge inside will not allow the the power to be able to flow in through the power area so that is why it we have we turn out the static charge on it so so that um uh, when you plug in your adapter power will be able to get into um the power area and be distributed across the board to the relevant places or components that needs power so with this um so i'll just hold the power button for some time and okay so i think i've been able to drain out the the static charge on this on this pc now that will be We've been able to drain out the static charge i'm going to plug in the adapter again and this time around the power will be distributed across the the logic board and then the problem is solved you can see that the power came in immediately initially when you plug in the your adapter the power will not come in immediately you can see the indicator turned on immediately and that is the importance of draining the the importance of draining the static charge on it you can see that the light is turning on now and the fan is also spinning so the reason why we have to open it up to this level is because of the CMOS battery you know the CMOS battery you have to open it up this way to be able to remove this CMOS battery so this CMOS battery is is likely dead so but I'm, I'm still going to measure it with my multimeter to to be sure that um, that is dead now if you can't get this as a type of CMOS battery I'm going to show there's a way you'll be able to make another CMOS battery like this with just your regular electrical black tape but first of all I'm going to measure the CMOS battery and check the voltage reading on it so what you need to do is just open up if your CMOS battery looks like this, open up the uh, the material that is covering the battery inside, and then pull your probe, your multimeter probe, on one end, one flat end of the battery, and then the other probe at the other flat end of the battery, and then you measure the reading. You set your multimeter to read um, 20 volt. And then you see what the reading is. So let's see. Oh, you can see. Oh my. Oh my logic board is just reading below. Just reading below the voltage so what i'm going to do is to remove what is covering this battery completely and then i am going to get another battery so when you get another battery it will likely come this way that is if you don't have access to this extra type so you get a battery what you're going to do is to place the 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 wires attached to it exactly the same way it was in the old one the red part will go to the parts that is clearly written plus sign and the other black wire will go on the other side of the wire then you use a silly tape to to tape it around and then you just fix it back to that location and in case you haven't done already like and subscribe to the channel we have great videos on how to fix all kinds of office equipment from laptops desktops and printers PBS inverters you name it
so now that i've been able to solve the problem i'm going to fix my battery back and then and the ram and i'm going to i'm going to power it on So I'm going to press the power button now and wait for it. You can see the indicator light is on because I fixed the RAM now. It's going to display on the screen. So you can see it's turning on normally the way it ought to be. So that is it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you some other time.